Privyet and welcome to Russia for- I'm sorry, I will never do that accent again, I swear, I will never again. Uh, but welcome back to XCOM Asia for Operation Banished Stallion. The critical mission to save a Skyrise construction site again. Yes, the Argentinian Builders Union must have put in a good word for us because when the builders of Russia discovered they had an alien problem, they knew exactly who to call. And once again, I would have liked it if they'd built me some bloody cover. As usual, the Sky Ranger lands in the least protected position on the map. And as usual, deal with it. We can complain about half cover or we can kill some aliens. So it's time to cowboy up. Now just like last time on the construction site, overcoming our low cover is going to be a matter of firepower. Our heavy and our sniper need to be stationary to rock out, so they get first dibs. Now once they're set up, it's time for our supports and our assault to inch forward. Unfortunately, it's not long before we run into our first bunch of building inspectors, so it's time to grab what cover we can. Tackled is forward enough to grab the best seat in the house, but Toothcake and Ghost Dad are going to have to make do with the leftovers. Now remember that as much as we'd like to flank or run, moving left is likely to just find us more aliens. So for our safety, we need to make do with what we've got by staying on the right. Alright, we're taking withering fire and bricks are exploding everywhere. It's your average construction site assault. But the good news is we see all the enemies and we know they've all moved. We saw one mine merge, two plasma shots, and that means none of them are on hidden overwatch. With that in mind, Chef Toothcake can cook us up a kill. Now remember that a recipe for a flank can be very finicky. For best results, you've got to get right behind them and stay away from cover. Here's one I prepared earlier. Now Toothcake's put himself in the open for that shot, so the squad needs to do everything they can to support him. We can't kill those aliens this turn, but we can pin them. Otter suppresses the closest target as he's the most accurate, and Tackled crosses over to give Toothcake some close cover. That frees up his spot for Ghost Dad, and so on for Ranos. And with both of them in range, we use Overwatch to keep the enemy in place. I feel, Commander. Suppression keeps us safe during the return fire, and with the enemy pinned, Tackled's got easy pickings. With the enemies down, we can reload, patch up, and prepare for our next battle. Now taking this right side has made our life considerably easier. Now we can fight and hide using a smorgasbord of cover. But our next job is taking the high ground, and the cover up there looks like slim pickings. So Otter takes a roof in advance, in the hopes she'll be able to help cover. And it's a good thing she does. Quiet. Do you hear something? Enemy in sight. He's down. With one sectoid down, the other two scurry for cover. We don't have much to go on here, but hopefully by pressing up against that big wall, our assault team can bound close enough to kill. Enemy spotted. Oh boy. Alright, low cover against six enemies is not gonna fly, so it's time to buckle down in the heavy stuff. With Bullet Swarm, Otter can take a free shot before she moves. It doesn't hit, but with free shots, you get what you pay for. Tackled gets the hell out of dodge before the aliens can pin him, and Rano sets up to cover the squad. Roger, I've got my eyes on. It's not a kill, but at least it wasn't a miss. And with even more sectoids charging us, we need all the damage we can get. I'm all right. Now considering we've only seen a couple of enemies take action this turn, that's a lot of possible overwatches. So any kind of big flank or movement is out of the question. But remember, thanks to Renos, there's a sectoid around this corner on very low health. We just can't see him. But if we guess he's hiding next to his buddy... Incoming! Alright, so he's not right there, but I know I saw him move up. And with Ghost Dad much closer, he's a much better guesser. Hoorah! With the two visible contacts down, I've got to start wondering what are the rest of them doing. So Tackled pulls back to cover our right flank. But these aliens have a love affair with this wooden ramp, and as Tackled confirms, they're really not interested in the flank at all. 
So it's up to Ghost Dad and Otter to ramp up the fire. He's down. But no sooner have we dug in for the next turn than another one runs out. They've got a whole bloody family at that ramp. Ranos misses the shot and the sectoid scurries on to his grim business. But as Ghost Dad lives through his second purple heart, it's time for another Chef Toothcake special. Take one sectoid, add two cups of movement with a teaspoon of running gun, and serve with buckshot. Bye -bye. Swiss sectoid is a perfect meal for dinners, parties, and corporate events. But as we patch up and reload, I know my boys and girls are hungry for more. And the next meal is already on its way. Scanning. What the hell was that? Well, you can lead a sectoid to a kill zone, but you can't make him die. But at the very least, it certainly scares the hell out of him. Holy shit, screw this! In spite of that, if I've learned anything fighting kamikaze sectoids in Season 1, I know they probably can't resist another good suicide charge. So we dig in for him to come back again. But as we do, it seems he's the least of my problems. Enemy in sight. So three more guests are coming to dinner. Hey, we heard you were scaring our friend. And with them dangerously close to flanking us, we need to keep them where they are. Aye, aye, and then kill them. It's a support pistolero extravaganza as Ghost Dad and Tackle bring the secondaries. Bye bye. Dead and gone. And it looks like that display of gunslinging has continued to scare the pants off that original sectoid. But it didn't scare his friend! With a one health sectoid taunting us on the platform, it's a carnival shootout. And like most carnival games, it's completely rigged. Otter and Ghost Dad can't even see the bastard, so they cover any movement. Oh, you wanna play the Overwatch game, huh? Let's do Overwatch, I'm crazy! But for all his guts and bravado, sometimes an alien's luck runs out. Bye bye. Rest in peace, little buddy. You had stones the size of a cyber disc. But as we move up to cover his body, we'd almost forgotten there was one sectoid left who was far less brave. I don't need this, I'm going back to Mars! Confirmed. So ends Operation Banished Stallion, with a final score of Construction Puns 0, Cooking Jokes Y, Dead Sectoids Yes. And as we fly home to a victory banquet, it's time for a little ability shopping. As an assault sergeant, Toothcake just got one of the best abilities in the game. Close and Personal's crit chance bonus cannot hold a candle to lightning reflexes. Reflexes forces one reaction shot a turn to completely miss, meaning all that annoying overwatch just got a lot easier to deal with. This ability makes Toothcake our hardest charger, which lets the squad as a whole be much more aggressive. For Ranos, Snapshot would allow him to move and fire his rifle in the same turn, but there's an aim penalty on it, and ultimately moving and shooting is something everyone can do. What no one else can do is squad sight. Any target that the squad sees and Ranos has a line of sight to, he can shoot. Next to Lightning Reflexes, Squad Sight is probably one of the best abilities you can pick. Finally, Ghost Dad joins Tackled as a support sergeant. And while I wouldn't say no to an extra smoke grenade, the extra medkits of Field Medic are too useful to pass up. But don't forget, there's actually one last trooper to handle, because one of the rewards for that mission was a sniper. Joining us from Russia is Sergeant Atlantan, and his third level choice is quite a toss up. Damn good ground increases the elevation bonus to attack and defense, which makes him a better sniper if he can find the terrain. But on the other hand, Gunslinger adds extra damage to his pistol, giving him a powerful backup weapon that he can use on the move. In my opinion, these are both really good choices, and last season I picked good ground. But this time, the flexibility, clutch capacity, and all-around awesomeness makes Gunslinger my season 2 choice. As the month of Smarch draws to a close, it's time to launch a satellite. 
and effectively decide who stays and who goes. With Brazil already staying, if I launch over Argentina, I could get the continental bonus in the future. And We Have Ways is hugely useful. So goodbye South Africa, adios Mexico, sorry about that Canada, because Argentina gets the satellite this month. After we transfer a jet there for the fence, it's time to get our monthly report. As expected, those three countries are now welcoming their new alien overlords, but the rest of the world looks pretty good. A couple days in, we do some business with our good South American friends, and the same day, it's time for some firepower. Well, it's kind of time, because we don't actually have enough engineers to even make the damn rifles, but at least we've got the pistols. With our mad dash to beam weapons complete, we can finally spare the time to get Xenobiology. But it's nowhere near completed when duty calls. With engineers as a reward, the choice is a no-brainer. And if we bring this one home, we might just be able to make some damn laser rifles. But for now, with two high-tech pistols in holster, the Sniper Strong squad heads off for April's first mission. We have visual on the mission site, setting down. If you're a good judge of tone, like me, then you'll know there's nothing foreboding about Operation Devil's Hydra. So join me next time for what I'm sure will be a very relaxing mission. Until then, have a good one.